If you got an old PC sitting around gathering dust, maybe you upgraded recently and haven't been using the old PC, one of the best things you can do is to give that hardware a new life. Instead of letting it just sit there, why not turn it into something useful like a home server? You can build your own NAS, a file server that's connected to your home network, where you can store important files and access them from anywhere. It's kind of hosting your personal Google Drive. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this video, turning my old PC into a fully functional NAS to give those used parts a second life. Let's get into it. Hi guys, this is Phelps and I've been looking for the optimal way of storing all videos I make for this channel. And NAS might be just the perfect solution. It will help me keep all my files in one place, easily accessible from multiple devices on the same network, which is super convenient. But here's the thing, pre-built NASes, like the ones from Synology, can be pretty expensive and that's not even including the hard drives. So after a ton of research, I decided to build my own NAS using an old PC I had lying around. This is my old machine from 2014 and we are going to strip it for parts and use them to build our NAS. Because a NAS is just a regular PC, it just runs AOS for storage like TrueNAS scale, which is Linux based, and from what I've seen, even older hardware can run it with decent performance. But to make this project a bit more fun, I wanted to take it up a notch. So while browsing online, I came across the 3D printable Mini ITX NAS case which got a sleek design, looks great sitting on a shelf, and it supports multiple hard drives so you can expand your storage easily. And that's the case I'm using for this build. Since I shoot everything in 4K, each video project can easily pass 100 gigs. I started out using portable SSDs, but now I'm ready on my fourth one, and constantly swapping them just to find files, it's a pain. So having an S is going to massively improve my workflow. Plus I want redundancy. I don't want to lose any files, which is one of the biggest benefits of a NAS. So first things first, I needed to print the case. The website offers a free version of the project that's already great and a paid version with extras like more HD base. And it also comes with a super detailed print guide. This was actually my first print with the Bamboo Lab A1 and right away I understood the hype on Bamboo Lab. It's basically the apple of 3D printers. Premium design, amazing ease of use and excellent print quality. I choose to print with PETG because it handles heat better than PLA, which is really important for something like a PC case, right? I also fired up my Kiji Key One Pro to help out with the printing because there were over 20 parts to make. In total, it took me several straight days of non-stop printing and about two kilograms of filament. Easily the biggest print job I've ever done. And with all the parts ready, I started assembling the case. I was honestly blown away by how precise the design was. Every panel fits perfectly with screws, the whole build is compact, supports a mini ITX motherboard, and it has slots for 1400mm fans. The side panels are open grid for a great airflow, and the drive bay module is separate, so you can print as many as you need, for 5 high drives, 10, whatever you need. Now let's talk about the hardware. I'm using a mini ITX LGA 1150 motherboard I picked up from AliExpress paired with an old Intel i7-4790 processor that I took from my old PC. For RAM, I'm also reusing 16 gigs of DDR3 memory from that same PC. The power supply is a 400 watt flex PSU, also from AliExpress. And for storage, I'm using two 2 terabyte SATA SSDs giving me a total of 4 terabytes. The build itself was super straightforward. I installed the RAM, mounted the motherboard inside the case and added a 512 gig NVMe SSD that will be used just for the OS. I also added a 2.5 gig network card since the onboard one was just 1 gig. That's gonna give me a nice speed boost over the network. On the other side of the case, I mounted a power supply, a 120mm fan for airflow, and the two 2TB SSDs. Then it was just a matter of connecting everything up and closing the case.
Once that was done, I created a bootable USB drive with true NAS scale. This OS is Linux based, free, and from what I've seen, it's not that hard to set up, even if you're like me, not a Linux pro. I plugged in a keyboard, monitor, and mouse just this once to get it configured, because after that, everything is gonna be managed remotely over the network. I went into the BIOS, booted from the USB drive and installed the system onto the NVMe SSD. After setting up a username and password, the system gave me a local IP address that I could use to access the NAS from any device on the network. Inside the TrueNAS dashboard, I went to the storage settings and created a mirrored storage pool. Mirrored is like RAID 1, so the files are duplicated across both SSDs. It means that I will only get 2TB of usable space instead of 4TB, but if one drive fails, I won't lose anything. I also set up the SMB, so the file shows up on the network like a regular shared drive. It works both Mac and Windows. And my goal here isn't storing files long term. Actually, what I want is fast access to current video projects we are working on. So 2TB is plenty. And for a future upgrade, I will probably add a second pool using those extra hard drive base to store older footage, maybe with 30 or 40 terabytes in total. Once everything was set up, I placed an S on the shelf and connected it directly to the router via Ethernet. I tested the connection using my Mac with a 2.5 gig adapter. The NAS showed up in Finder, I logged in and boom, there it was. The 2 terabytes partition showed up and already had a few files that I left in there. Now let's talk about speeds. Those SSDs can read and write at around 545 megabytes per second, but with my current router, I'm limited to 1 gig which means max speeds will cap around 125 megabytes per second. That's fine for now, but I'm planning to upgrade to a 2.5 gig network soon, using a pretty affordable switch from AliExpress that will allow speeds around 312 megabytes over the network. But of course, if I wanted to actually hit the SSD's max speed, I would need a 10 gig network, which is way more expensive, but 2.5 gig now is already a great step up. I ran a Blackmagic disk speed test and confirmed I was getting around 100 megabytes per second, exactly what we would expect from a gigabit connection. Then I transferred a 8 gig file, one of my recent videos, and it took less than a minute, not bad at all. I even opened a Final Cut project directly from the NAS and it played back smoothly, no hiccups or lag, so even at 1 gig, it was already working well. This thing is going to be a game changer here in this studio. Multiple machines can now access the same files with ease. My editor can just grab footage straight from the NAS and start working without moving drives around. I'm really happy how this will turn out. I did a lot of research to get it right and it worked even better than I hope. And with the network upgrade coming soon, it's only going to get better. If you liked this video, go ahead and drop a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me a lot. And thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.